Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Megan Edwards, the owner and an animal nutrition consultant of Integral Nutrition. So Dr. Edwards, before we get started, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself? Sure. Um, my name is, is Megan Edwards and I'm Australian by birth. Um, I am a animal nutrition consultant um, focusing on nutrition and production. My company is based out of Singapore and I work mainly throughout Oceania and Asia Pacific, but I'm also quite active in uh, LATAM and Southern Europe. Today, I've been invited here by a company called Anamine. They're an independent international provider of precision minerals. And they've asked me to come and share with you some of my experience um, at a commercial level with using their activated minerals. So let's talk about a little bit of that experience at the commercial level. So from what I've heard as well, you seem to have a lot of experience and knowledge about effectively reducing the amount of zinc and copper in pigs with some of the strategies that you use. So would you mind telling us a little bit about some of the results you've seen? Sure. Um, so the first um, product that Anamine uh, launched was a potentiated zinc product. It contained 75% zinc and it was launched into the market to help producers um, uh, be able to effectively lower the level of total zinc in the diet, but to still be able to manage uh, the challenges around post-weaning diarrhea. Um, so this product was launched um, and I'm started to play around with it in the Australian market. In the beginning, I was a little bit skeptical or nervous, um, but I did have a lot of success at 300 grams per ton um, with this product in the Australian market, um, and it gave me a lot of confidence. However, after that, I um, moved and lived in Asia and worked throughout the Asian region. And what I discovered there is that reducing zinc in an Asian environment is a little bit more challenging. Obviously, in Australia, our diets are based on wheat and barley, so they have a high level of inert fiber. We also have um, very good weaning weights um, and, and housing conditions. So in Asia, I had to factor in um, the importance of, of zinc and how to use it in relation to differences in weaning ages and quality, health status, um, housing, and obviously the environment, the, the heat stress factor in Asia is um, also important to, to factor in. And so what I've discovered there is that you need to not only obviously change your source of zinc, but you need to have a, a good holistic strategy that involves um, improving the diet. So what I have learned over the years is that when we add zinc, we often cover up many of our nutritional for shortfalls. Um, so if we're going to remove or reduce zinc, then we need to make sure that the base diet is as good as it can be. So the potentiated zinc um, in its own right, it has many functional benefits um, because of its low dosage. So when we are able to reduce zinc um, inclusion from three kilos down to 300, 400 grams, what we find is that automatically we are able to achieve a lower acid binding capacity in the diet. And this is very important for young pigs who struggle with stomach functionality at a young age. Um, and it also means that the things like organic acids and um, enzymes that we're paying good money for are in a much more um, effective environment and are able to do their job um, significantly better. One other uh, observation that we see in pigs that are fed lower zinc diets is that they actually consume a lot less water. Um, and this can be important, particularly on farms where um, they have to pay to remove slurry you would um, naturally get the benefit of lower zinc excretion, which can be important for manure management. And at the moment in some markets, there's actually a financial advantage um, due to the water, the price of minerals is unusually high, and it can be economically interesting to switch to potentiated zinc um, rather than normal phonological zinc oxide. So you might be wondering, how does this product work? How can we go from three kilos down to 300 grams? Well, it's related to uh, two aspects of the product. The first aspect is related to the specific surface area. So if you imagine a corn kernel and then you imagine a piece of popcorn, this is um, how I like to view the, the product. So when they process this product, they use um, specific um, temperature and pressure settings to create this popcorn-like structure, which is very sponge-like. And that means that we have a very high surface area 
And this means that we have a, a high antibacterial effect. So even though we have a lower dose of the initial product, we have a high surface area so we can obtain the same antibacterial benefit. In addition to this, um, the physiochemical properties of the product are such that it has what is described as a slow um, disillusion disill kinetic. Um, so if you think about um, organic minerals, for example, we buy them because they're highly bioavailable, which means they're um, rapidly absorbed. Um, and in the case of the normal pharmacological zinc, we know that it's mainly inert um, and passes out the back of the pig. But Anamine have worked to develop a technology where we can get the benefits of the antibacterial effect as well as the um, high bioavailability effect. So the product solubilizes slowly um, over time along the gut. So for um, the stomach and the upper small intestine, it is acting as an antibacterial compound. And then as it moves towards the ileum, it's able to be absorbed because it becomes solubilized and that makes it highly bioavailable as well as um, antibacterial. So um, from an experience point of view, if you'd like to move away from zinc, I understand it can be very nerve wracking because zinc oxide has served us very well over the years. Um, you do have to take a holistic approach. So you need to think very carefully about the quality of the protein in your diet, um, the digestibility of the protein. Um, you also need to think about whether you have adequate inert fiber. Inert fiber is essential for accelerating the, the gut development and the natural excretion of acid for the digestion of protein and fat. Um, you also need to think about um, using uh, organic acids and, and digestive enhancers like enzymes very efficaciously. You need to keep an eye on the acetylphenic capacity of your diet. And um, from a personal point of view, I've had a lot of success removing um, or reducing zinc um, when I have nursery diets that contain spray dry plasma. It is a very useful passive tool to help us through that difficult time um, and one that I think works well. It is really important though um, not to rely only on the diet. So obviously there's a lot of um, factors that influence whether or not diarrhea will occur um, and so uh, you cannot ignore, for example, management, hygiene, and fire security in your decision to, to reduce it. So the second product that they launched um, is a monovalent form of copper. It um, has this fabulous, brilliant red color, um, which is very unique and distinct. Um, and monovalent forms of copper are more antibacterial than divalent forms of copper. And that's the reason why this product has been used in the horticulture industry for many years. It is classified as an organic fungicide, so it's very effective at killing both fungi and bacteria, but it is not toxic um, to the plants that it's applied to. So using that concept, um, Anamine now have launched it for the animal feed industry so we can get the same uh, benefits. Um, one of the key uh, advantages of this product is the absorption pathways in the gut. So we do have what are called DMTs, divalent metal transporters, and these are transporters in the gut that are for all divalent minerals. And as you will know in your premix, the level of copper is relatively low compared to zinc or manganese or other um, uh, minerals. And so this means that zinc struggles for absorption because it needs to compete and there's a limited access to that transporter but there is a second transporter um, along the intestine that is called CTR1 and this is a unique transporter that is only for monovalent copper um, and so the body is able to convert uh, traditional divalent copper to, to monovalent copper but this does require um, an enzyme reduction and it does also require energy so by providing the animal with a monovalent form of copper we can over or overcome or bypass those um, processes and therefore enhance the absorption of copper for, for the pig um, and avoid that competition related with the DMT transport. So copper sulfate has traditionally been used in the diets of pigs as a natural growth promotant. It does have a reasonable antibacterial effect. But what we found um, with monovalent copper is that it's actually able to bring greater benefits at a lower dose. So we can get the antibacterial effect um, and improve efficiency. But at the same time, uh, normal traditional copper sulfate is actually quite toxic to the liver of the pigs and it accumulates over time and this has a negative systemic effect and does impair efficiency. 
but monovalent copper doesn't accumulate in the liver at anywhere near the same rate. We're also adding it in at a lower dose, and so this reduces the oxidative stress on the pig. We see improvements in growth performance and also improvements in carcass quality, so we get higher lean meat yield when using this product. We get obviously lower excretion and better profitability because typically copper is utilized over a fairly long period of time. Gotcha. Well, I believe that's all the time we have, so thank you again for coming on the show and agreeing to be here. Thank you. It's great. Thanks for having me. Yep, and to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this episode and we are constantly on the lookout for the latest updates in swine nutrition. And if you have a swine nutrition related research trial that you would be able to share on our podcast, please send an email to nutritionblackbelt at swineit.com and we would love to talk about your research. See you later.